Of all the differentiation rules, the chain rule is perhaps the most powerful because composition is so powerful in mathematics. Recall the chain rule, which says that derivatives are multiplicative under composition. For purposes of illustration, let's assume that we have a linear function, v as a function of x. And then what we do is we take the output of this function, v, and we feed it into another linear function, u, that depends on v. Then the composition of these two linear functions will again be a linear function, u composed with v. The coefficient of this composition is going to be the product of the coefficients of u and v. That's the linear version of the chain rule. The cool thing is it works with nonlinear functions as well when you linearize by taking the derivative. Let's give a justification for this using some asymptotics. To compute the derivative of u composed with v at x, that is u of v of x, what we want to show is that the derivative of u composed with v is the derivative of u times the derivative of v. Now that's the idea, that's the shorthand version. It gets a little complicated, as we shall see. Our process is same as it ever was. We're going to take u composed with v and evaluate it at x plus h, where h is some small perturbation to the input of this function. This is, of course, u of v of x plus h. And we're going to start off by expanding that inner function v as per usual. So this expands out to u of what? v of x plus dv dx times h plus big O of h squared. Now comes the part where you need to be careful. We're going to expand u, but notice, what is the input to u? It's not x, it's v of x. And the perturbation to this new input is all the remaining terms. So dv dx times h plus big O of h squared. That together is the perturbation to this function u at the input v. Now what we can do is expand u. The zeroth order term is going to be u of v of x. Then we take the derivative du dv the derivative with respect to u's input, and we multiply that by the perturbation. That is dv dx times h plus big O of h squared. Now that's not all. We have the higher order terms, but those are all in big O of the perturbation squared. The leading order term of that perturbation is dv dx times h, so we take that and we square it. But what do we do with that? Well, this dv dx is just a constant at the particular input we're working with. So I have big O of some constant times h squared. That's really big O of h squared. To simplify this out, we go term by term. The zeroth order term is u composed with v at x. The first order term, the term that just has one h in it, is du dv times dv dx. Everything else is in big O of h squared. And that coefficient of the first order term, du dv times dv dx, that's it. That is the derivative. And that's the justification for the chain rule. Now, as can be seen from a careful viewing of that justification, we have to be careful. The evaluation points really matter when you're working with the chain rule. So we've shown that du dx equals du dv times dv dx. But if we want to evaluate that derivative at a particular input a, then we evaluate dv dx at a, but we evaluate du dv at v of a. We have to use the image of that input under the inner function v. Now that sounds pretty complicated, but in your previous exposure to calculus, this is the kind of thing that your hand learns better than your head. Let's go over a simple example. 
Compute the derivative of e to the cosine of x at the input a equals pi over 2. Now the first thing to do is to figure out what's the inner function v and the outer function u. It's going to be best if we choose v to be cosine of x. Then the derivative of v with respect to x evaluated at a is going to be what? Well, the derivative of cosine is minus sine. I evaluate that at pi over 2. That gives me negative 1. The outer function, u of v, is that exponential, e to the v. What's the derivative of e to the v with respect to v? We know that. It's e to the v, but we have to evaluate it not at pi over 2, but at cosine of pi over 2. So the derivative of u with respect to v evaluated at v of a is really e to the 0, and that is simply 1. And now we're done. The derivative of u with respect to x evaluated at a is du dv at v of a times dv dx at a. That's negative 1 times positive 1. The final answer is negative 1. Now there's a lot of symbols floating around here. There's a lot of notation, but a little bit of practice with the chain rule, and you get really good at knowing how to use it and where to evaluate these derivatives.